if you don't want to teach, don't teach. Yeah. Quit. Just stay at home and, and stop teaching children, okay? Or, because when you set up, uh, when you set up that barrier to getting back to class, when when healthcare officials say that you can still be testing positive 30 days after, well, you you obviously, if that's your standard, you don't. You are either ignorant when it comes to science, or you just don't want to be in classes. And if you don't want to be in classes, that's fine. Listen, thank you for your service to our children. Now go get another job. That was MSNBC's Joe Scarborough scolding teachers for having the audacity to want to work remotely during a global pandemic. Now, ironically, Joe Scarborough himself is working remotely. Why aren't you in your studio right now, Joe? Why aren't you currently at work yourself? If you don't want to work, Joe, maybe you should quit your job. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure that somebody else would happily take your position over at MSNBC where you make $8 million a year to talk. But I mean, he just exudes elitism in this in this clip, and it is insufferable to me. Now, in case you missed it at the beginning, he was talking about an article that he referenced. It's from USA Today, and the title reads, Virtual Walkout, Chicago Teachers Vote for Remote Learning. City cancels classes for most of its 330,000 students. Now, when you dive into the article, you learn that the teachers didn't vote to go back to remote learning because they're lazy. They didn't make this decision flippantly. They did it out of concern for the staffers, the teachers themselves, as well as the students. And that's pretty reasonable considering that currently hospital admissions among children are twice as high as they were during the peak of Delta. So yeah, that makes sense. Now, Grace Hawk explains teachers in the nation's third largest school district voted Tuesday to switch to remote learning and city teachers reacted by canceling classes for most of the district's 330,000 students. The Chicago Teachers Union voted late Tuesday to pause in-person learning and work remotely until January 18th or until COVID-19 cases fall below a particular threshold. The union, which has roughly 25,000 members, is also demanding the district require negative tests from students and staff before returning to school. This decision was made with a heavy heart and a singular focus on student and community safety, the union said in a statement late Tuesday night. Yeah, so to me, that's pretty reasonable. Now, I don't know why it's so absurd to think that remote learning is necessary, at least in the short term, because it's not just the teachers and the students who are infecting their peers potentially. It's also the lunch ladies, it's the bus drivers. So even if the CDC reduced the quarantine period from 10 to five days to get people back to work sooner, there's still going to be outages because we're in the third wave. And yesterday we just had a million new cases. So I don't get why this is so unreasonable. Why is remote learning during a global pandemic something that's just so absurd? Like, am I, am I living in the twilight zone? I, I, I don't get it. Now. Joe Scarborough also said something about how they must be ignorant to the science because, you know, there are some people who are testing positive 30 days afterwards and they're clearly not contagious, right? But that's not what the teachers are asking. Now, to speak to what he's saying there, yes, it is the case that there are people who test positive who are asymptomatic for a long time. So there's a case where there's a mom who tested positive but was asymptomatic. Now, she was still positive after 37 days, but infectious disease expert David Priest told WCNC Charlotte that you're usually not contagious after those first 10 days. So yes, it is the case that what he's saying is true. Some people test positive for quite some time, but it's not like these teachers are asking to be out of work for a month because they're lazy. That's not what they're asking. And if anything, these teachers want to work because if you are positive, you have to self-quarantine for at least five days. But if you are doing distance learning, you're working remotely, even if you're asymptomatic and positive, you can still teach your students without infecting anyone. So what are you saying here? The, the point that he brought up is irrelevant. I feel like he just wanted to shoehorn in some sort of excuse as to call them anti-science as he also works remotely, by the way. So it's just, this is elitism on display. But I would be remiss to not point out how other cable media pundits are saying basically the same thing because Brian Kilmeade on Fox News also told people, go back to work as he broadcasted remotely from his home. And I want to make it clear too, that I met so many teachers, and Ainsley, you, your sister's teacher, and your mom was a teacher, 
Uh, and I met so many teachers. I went to about 18 cities over the last uh, two months. And so many people say, I know Fox doesn't like teachers. I go, no, no, you got it all wrong. It, Fox is in awe right. of teachers. Uh, the unions that are in control, that they're forced to join in order to get a job, that's the issue. But guess what has changed? You know what it used to be? It used to be us on the couch. It used to be uh, almost every Republican uh, political leader, almost everyone, uh, saying, go get the kids back in school. And the Democrats get in charge, and it's like, no, no, we're going to, we need money to get schools ready and, and six feet apart. And then we get plexiglass in order to get. And now all of a sudden things have changed. If you see the new mayor of New York City, if you see Lori Lightfoot of Chicago, if you see well, what is happening in Los Angeles, everywhere you go in Massachusetts, the moderate governor, a Republican governor, who has really gone liberal on so many different causes, is now pushing back all on the same page saying, Kids need to be in school. Mm -hmm. And guess the only people standing in the way are teachers' unions. The kids need to be in school. The parents need to be teaching in school. The mayor's saying get into school. The governors are saying get into school. The president's saying get into school. Dr. Fauci said get to school. They're the only thing stopping. These kids are going to have their learning curve forever curtailed unless something happens quickly. And this yes. should be our mantra from here on in. Let's not get caught up in the daily nuances of what doctor's in and what's out. It's called live with it go to work live with it go to try get on a train get on a bus get on a plane how do we live with it we can no longer hide from it that's the 10 day to 5 day rule it's called live with it go to work he says this as he broadcasts remotely i don't know that he'd keep that same energy if he were the one that had to work with the public or if he were the one that had to teach students if he was putting himself at risk i don't know that he would be as enthusiastic about getting back to normal despite the virus being in a third wave and more cases than ever before like we're breaking world records and he's saying no, no, no now is the time where you have to live with it even if the pandemic itself isn't over technically um you have to live with it you do but i don't See, this is the thing about these elitist pundits. They are looking down from their ivory towers at the peasants and they're scoffing at the peasants who dare to want to protect themselves, who dare to want to not get sick themselves. See, as long as these elites get their Amazon packages delivered on time, as long as they have their pizzas show up when they order them, as long as the shelves are stocked, they're happy. But the second there's any disruptions to their convenient lives, that's when they start to do things like this and demand that you go back to work so that way life can, uh, life can be normal for them. It speaks to everything that's wrong with mainstream media. There are no alternative perspectives. You get elitism and that's it. That's the only perspective that you get. They don't know what it's like to have to be the door greeter at Walmart to hand out masks to people during a pandemic and get screamed at by these fucking Karens who um, are angry because you don't have a particular flavor of Cheerios that they're looking for. Like they don't know what that's like, but they don't care. That's why they expect you to go back to work, risk your own health, risk the health of your family and your peers because they want things to go back to normal. They want to send their kids back to school. They want their life lives to be normal so even if you know working remotely is not acceptable for you it's definitely acceptable for them i just I, I don't know what to say about this like the clip speaks for itself these folks are fucking elitist pricks and fuck anyone who agrees with them if you really believe that things should go back to normal then uh walk the walk go back to work in your studios i mean you're more protected there than most regular workers are people with normal jobs don't get to work in a cozy studio where they make sure that all of you know your your co-workers are vaccinated fox news has very stringent vaccine mandates they make sure that people are quarantined for a specific amount of time if they're positive it's just it's truly ridiculous but honestly you know this type of dystopian idiotic things that we see is exactly what you expect out of a late stage capitalist society where you truly value you know profits and the economy more than the lives of actual human beings